proud of my family because I've got college degree. Out of all my dad's side of the family, I'm the only one, you know, that's, that's got a college degree. I was young. And, you know, you're going to get told that through, through, through times that, that you can't do something. Well, some of those things I mentioned before, you can do those kind of things if you want to. And you, you never want to quit. You, you never want to quit. And I, I, I would tell you that, you know, I'll talk about my marriage first. I'm a very open person. And my wife sat up there. I didn't know she was going to sit up there. But uh, she's kind of escorting me around at the next speaking engagement, so she keeps an eye on me. But, you know, we've been married 27 years, like I said. And when you get married when you're 21 and 19 years old, I wouldn't recommend that to any of you, okay? But we did. We loved each other. We didn't have a lot of money. We could get more financial aid to go to college. We got each other through college. But when you're 21, 19, you don't know anything, believe me. And as I grew through that marriage and, and, and where we lived and, and how we did things, you know, we lived in a, I remember living in a trailer house. I think we lived, what, three years? Three years in a trailer house, about $150 a month. That was a great deal, you know. Eat peanut butter and jelly and, and have a in life. But there was trying times there. There was times that she didn't know she wanted to be married to a football coach, okay? There was times she went, well, I don't know about this deal. I don't know if I signed up for all this. I, I wouldn't want to be married to me, believe me. But she never quit. I mean, right now you can go down and get divorced for $25 down at the local deal, you know. I mean, that's too easy. you got to work at stuff. We have worked at our marriage. We've worked at it. It's, that's the hardest thing you do in life is being married to the same person for a long time because that's not easy. But you got to work at it, and we never quit. And we could have. We had two beautiful girls. We didn't want to quit on them either. So you have to work at those things, and it's not always easy. I, you know, I'm a survivor of cancer. Uh, that's a tough disease, let me tell you. You know, we just found out here of a tragedy, a young man that uh, was right here on our own campus that worked over in the combo, uh, had a situation uh, and had cancer. And uh, it's, it's a very, very, very tough thing. And it's not easy when you're told that you have something like that. You know, there's a baseball coach in Southern Illinois, a guy named Dan Callahan, who's fighting cancer right now. He's been fighting it for about three or four years and going through a difficult situation. The guy's probably lost 75, 80 pounds, and he's still fishing batting practice because he won't quit. He just won't quit. He just keeps battling. You know, just keeps, you know. And you know what? Sooner or later, there's enough experimental things out there. If he hangs around, what? Might get healed. There's miracles out there. So you can't quit. You, you, you just can't. And sometimes it's hard. And when things don't go your way, or if you get fired on a job, I'll get fired. You know, I mean, I've been forcing to this point. I haven't, but I, shoot, I might get fired from here next year and you'll have somebody else speaking. You know what? That's okay <laughs> with me. I mean, hey, you know, that's, that's life. And you move on. But you're, you're going to fail and, and things are going to be tough. But don't quit on yourself. Don't give in. If you've got a dream, you got a vision, you want to go do something, don't tell somebody. And you've got to be reasonable about it, but don't let somebody tell you you can't do it. And the only way you do it is through an education. you got to get an education. I mean, education, there's nothing more important than that. And then I think number 10, live a life you have. Okay? You, when you get... You know, you, you're people that get to make your decisions. I've learned, when I was diagnosed with cancer, four or five, I've been in remission, what, four years or five years? Five. I shouldn't remember that. I try not to, but I try to remember all that stuff. But five, I've been in remission for five years. And, you know, through that, and I'm still the same old Jerry Till, a bit bullheaded, hard to put up with. And I'm always a little bit pushy because I, I believe in, in, in doing the best you can while you're here. But I can tell you this is that, uh, you know, I think I live life pretty darn good. I don't try to, I've got a beautiful family. I love coaching football. I love going out there with those kids. That's my, that's my sanctuary out there. I just enjoy it. You know, I enjoy getting to go up and go to church on Sunday morning. I enjoy going down there and eating at Egg Haven down there and get me an eggs and bacon on Sunday. Hey, that's what I like. You got to live life, you know, every day. Because you know what? There's no guarantee when I walk out that door today, I'll be here. I found that out. Good Lord gave me a second chance. You know, and when I got a second chance, I said, well, you know, I'm going to live it while I did. I, I went and bought, we went, 
didn't even really have the money. And I went down, I wanted to live on a lake. As soon as I found out I had cancer, I drove around down in Southern Illinois. I always wanted to live on a lake. Found this place, it's kind of a dumpy old place needed fixed up. Guess what, I bought the damn thing. I really didn't have the money, but I knew the banker. And he said, hey, I'll give you 4% coach. I said, I don't care about the money. I want to live on a lake and hell, if I'm gonna die, I'm gonna live on a lake. I'm gonna make sure I get on that lake. I got on that lake and I'm still around to enjoy the lake, except I moved. <laughs> Now my daughter gets to enjoy the lake. But I wanted to live life. I wanted to chase those dreams. So don't let don't let don't let your life waste around around with what I don't sweat the small stuff. Some of those little things you get caught up in the, the gossiping and all those little things you get caught up when you're young people. Let that stuff go. Concentrate on your vision and living life. And, and that's what I've learned. And I've learned it the hard way. I've lost a lot of people in my life. Lost friends. Uh, I've had a player that was murdered. Uh, you know, it was a terrible tragedy. Still stay in touch with his family. Um, I've seen it all. I really have. I've lived like I'm 49 years old, and, and uh, I've lived it like I'm 69. I can tell you that. I've gone full speed, and I uh, wouldn't change it for the world. But you have to live it, and uh, it's a lot of fun if you do it. But then the last thing you can give those life lessons I talked about: hard work. I talked about handling adversity. I talked about giving back and paying forward, taking care of your family, care about others more than you care about yourself, loyalty, communication, don't judge people, never quit, live life, life you have, live it. But the most important thing is, I get in trouble for saying this, but I am what I am. You can't do nothing without faith. It doesn't matter what faith you have. I'm not into that. Okay? But you have to have some sort of faith, whatever your faith is. You have to have faith in yourself. You have to have faith without evidence. You have to have faith that you're going to get a college degree because there's no living proof. If you're a freshman right now, you're going to get it. But you got to believe and you got to have faith you're going to have it. And you're going to get there. With me, and again, this doesn't have to be with you, is that I was one of those people that talked about, you know, going to, oh yeah, I, I coach, and I go to church first, and, and I take care of my family, and, and, and all that, and God's first. I was one of those guys for the 44 years, I wasn't one of those guys. I coached football, and put my life into football. I worked my family in when I could, and I worked God in there somewhere in between the phases. But, life lesson. Learned you better have faith, and you know I don't. I you know I don't. I, I can tell you I wouldn't be here without having faith, and I've got a, a lot of faith, and it helps me get through the tough times. And I think you have to lean on somebody, whatever your faith may be, good for whatever that is. For me, it's God. Is that you know when when times really get tough, a lot of people don't do that. I sneak over there to. Newman Church, I just go over there, that's my, that's my peace of mind, and I get out of there, and I go on with my day, but I believe you have to have faith that you can do all those top ten lessons, you got to believe you can, and, you, and, and it goes a long way, so that's the top ten things that I've kind of been through in my life and learned from, and, and uh, the biggest thing is, is that I give my credit for my life lessons is through experiences and mistakes. You're going to make mistakes. I mean, if you're not making mistakes, you ain't doing anything. You're not doing nothing. I've been around people that go, well, I've never made a mistake. Well, yeah, you have never done anything. You sit in your office, you don't do anything. How are you going to get any better? You're going to make mistakes. Mr. Comfort's yelling at me constantly. I'm always driving him nuts. You know, I make a few mistakes, but you know what? I'm going to keep doing it because that's the only way you get better. That's the only way you can live experiences and life experience. you got to got to go out there and go after it enjoy it so with that in mind is there any questions and you can ask me anything